Today in the life of the church, we honor St. Martin of Tours, who certainly came to, know, came to know and understand today's gospel. For in a certain sense, in his life, it was not he who sought the Lord, but it was the Lord who sought him. And so, Martin was born of pagan parents, and very early on in life, he was drawn by the teachings of Christianity and the example of the early Christians. At the age of 15, he would begin studying the Catholic faith and ultimately receive his baptism at the age of 18. Also at the age of 15, it was then that Martin of Tours entered into the Roman, mili the Roman military might. Uh, but Martin would never fight because in studying Christianity, he would apply the principle that of, the, of all the battles that the Romans involved in, he believed that they were unjust battles. And so he would continue with this, ultimately being assigned to the provinces of Gaul. And there, that, mo that event that has been immortalized in most of artwork, many of us are familiar with St. Martin of Tours because he is depicted as the knight who, who, mount who dismounts from his horse in order to divide his cloak in half to give to a poor beggar. But what is often not understood or not remembered is that s not shortly thereafter, St. Martin would have the Christ child appear to him with half a cloak. And so it was truly that principle in which he tried to see everyone as Christ that this event in the life of St. Martin is to teach us that we are to strive to look upon all as, as the Christ child in need. And so we are called to acts of charity. And so St. Martin, in the, after leaving the military, after or miraculously being preserved, from certain death for one t time in Gaul, he was assigned to, to fight a battle which he refused to enter. He was found guilty of treason and was going to be set on, sent to the front lines which would have meant his certain death for it was such a sentence that the Roman soldiers <coughs> were to abandon those who were found guilty of treason on the front line unless they showed themselves worthy in battle, that is, unless they began to take up their arms in fights. And so St. Martin would have met certain death, <coughs> except on the eve of the battle, uh, the enemy sued for peace, and so the battle never occurred. And the Romans, who had somewhat of a sense of justice, uh, could not find St. Martin guilty of treason because he did not he did not go through with the act of not fighting in the battle because the battle did not take place. Upon leaving the military, he would dedicate his life to works of charity, and ultimately he would, he would retire to the life of a hermit, and there as a hermit he would be called to be bishop, which he would refuse, and then through a ruse he was led to Tours, and when he, when he, when he went to Tours, the populace grabbed him and proclaimed and proclaimed to the rooftops that they wished him to receive the bishopric upon which he became the bishop of, of Tours and even there he retired to the life of, of a hermit and dedicated himself entirely to God through prayer and continuing to do all that he could for the people entrusted to his care. Saint Martin of Tours illustrates to us how it is possible to sanctify every aspect of human life for he went through the whole of human, human life uh, to, to different vocations, different callings, first as a military soldier, then as one who gave who, in works of charity. He never experienced the sacrament of matrimony, but his dedication to his parents was truly rewarded by the conversion of his, by the conversion of his mother. And so he showed himself a true disciple of Christ, a true lover of Christ, because he had a profound faith in all that Christ came to sanctify. And so St. Martin of Tours is particularly significant in the life of all Christians because he is the first known saint who was elevated to the altars without shedding his blood in a martyr's death. St. Martin would die of natural causes and he would be the first 
the first saint to die of such causes that was raised to the altars of the altar. And so he truly shows to all of us that while we must be willing to shed our blood for Christ, we can find sanctity without necessarily being called by our Lord to make that witness of our faith. And so St. Martin would witness to his faith through the whole of his life. In the beginning, he always sought truth because he was always of the disposition, a good, a good lad who always sought truth. Upon finding it, he would embrace it immediately and would not allow even human respect or his position in the Roman military to cause him to do something that he truly knew was contrary to the will of God. And after that, he would use all his wealth and all his means to take care of the poor because he saw in them the poor Christ. And so he teaches us also to see the poor Christ in all souls, including even ourselves. For like him, we must depend upon our Lord for all things. For he knew he could make no progress in holiness without the grace of God, and he could not even offer those works of charity unless the grace of God inspired him to do so, and the grace of God gave him the ability to do so. And so he truly was a man who became enamored with Jesus Christ and truly in love with Jesus Christ, and he would turn to our Lord for all things. And ultimately, he would be called to the to the vocation to be a hermit, and ultimately from there to be a bishop, all and, 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 and through each level and each progression, progression, St. Martin would exercise heroic virtue. And so he gives hope to all members of the mystical body who in him see it is not necessarily that we must shed our lives in, 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 a, in, a, in a strict martyrdom, that is, the martyrdom by which we give up our lives in defense of the faith, <coughs> but we also can become quite holy if we persevere through that white martyrdom, through the trials and tribulations of everyday ordinary life insofar as we strive to carry out those tasks with, with heroic virtue. And so St. Martin would carry everything out with heroic virtues and ultimately he would receive his recompense for upon his death, the Lord certainly with his mother came to comfort him in his final trial and his final tribulation. And indeed, being the first non-martyred saint, he teaches us all that we must truly persevere into death. And it is when death sets in that our final and most difficult tribulation comes because the devil himself will strive at this point to cause us finally to despair and lose that which we had persevered through in the most of our lives. And so St. Martin would turn to the Lord and his most holy mother in his final trial and tribulation and show himself at that moment a true soldier of Christ, persevering and ultimately after the natural death he experienced, he would receive that reward which we must all strive for, union with his good God to get union with his good God with all the angels and saints, and now he truly is a member of the angelic choir, praising that God who did such wonderful things for him in the life he had on this earth, and now he worships that God for all eternity in heaven. And so let us strive like Saint Martin of Tours to try to strive to sanctify everything the Lord asks us to do, whether it is the ordinary things of human life, the extraordinary ministry of being a bishop of a city, and ultimately let us honor our life when death sets in, whether it be a martyr's death or the natural death or whatever death the Lord has chosen for us. Saint Martin of Tours begins to show every member of the mystical body that in all facets and in all ways they can truly acquire that sanctity for which the soul was created. And so let us particularly turn to him in our day, in our age, ask him to intercede for our modern age so that it may reject that paganism that he rejected and ultimately come to know the love of Christ and knowing that love of Christ, serve him in this life in order that we truly may be happy with him in the life to come. Yeah.